Let's uh, use our newfound understanding of limits and L'Hopital's rule to graph a couple, uh, a couple more functions, uh, two of my favorites. And this is the first one right here, f of x equals x e to the negative x. It's, um, I don't know, it's kind of a typical one. Let's, let's see once what we can learn from it. And again, as I've been doing, uh, now that uh, we've done quite a few of these graphs, I'll suggest that as much as you can, try to uh, do it on your own. Okay, one level of understanding something is just shaking your head yes when someone does it, but it's a much higher level if you can, if you can actually do it on your own. So try it, see what's what you can do. So here we go, domain. The exponential function accepts everything and x accepts everything. So there's no restrictions at all. Domain is everything, the whole real line. Intercepts. f of 0 is equal to 0, which is both an x and a y intercept. And notice there are no other x-intercepts because this will never be zero other than that zero, and this will never be zero, period. So that's the only x and y-intercept right there. Symmetry. f of negative x is negative x e to the negative of the negative x, which is e to the x. You look at this and you say, is this exactly the same as this? Nope, it's not. Is it exactly the negative of this? Nope, it's not. So there's no symmetries. Asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes occur where the denominator of a function goes to zero, such as x minus 3, something like that. Would, that would be a, a vertical asymptote, more than likely, because the bottom goes to zero and the top doesn't. There's no denominator here. If you wanted to, you could write this as x over e to the x, write it as a denominator. But no, notice there's no place for that hit zero, like, like there is here. So uh, there's no, no vertical. For horizontal, let's check out what happens as x goes to infinity. So you look at this, recall this is one we did a couple of lessons ago. Both of these things are going off to infinity. So you can use L'Hopital's rule, which we did before, and you're going to get derivative of the x is 1. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, as x goes to infinity, that gets big. 1 over a big number goes to 0. So let's write that one down. Oops, 0. And now we have to check what happens as you go to minus infinity. So let's change it. Can we use L'Hopital's rule there as well? Well, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. As x goes to minus infinity, this thing is becoming a large negative number. Agreed? And the bottom, what does e to the x look like? There's e to the x as x goes to minus infinity e to the x is going to 0. It's going to 0, and it's always going to be a positive number. So what do you conclude? Can you use L'Hopital's rule? Nope. L'Hopital's rule said it has to be of the form 0 over 0, or one of the infinities over infinity. So it's neither of those. That's the bad news. The good news is you don't have to use L'Hopital's rule. You can get it just by thinking about it. That's the whole point. As x goes to minus infinity, this thing here is getting to be a big number, and this is helping it be a big number. If you take even a 2 and you divide it by 0 or something close to 0, it's going to be going off to infinity. You divide by a smaller and smaller number, 
the ratio gets big. Well, now they're, they're work, there's, there's no tension here at all. Not only is there no tension, they're, they're working together. This one's trying to make it big, and this is trying to make it big all the more. So it's going to infinity, and which one, positive or negative? Negative on top, positive on the bottom. So it's going to negative infinity. So uh, that's what I like about graphing. It really just forces you to think. If some people, when they take calculus courses and so on, they, they're just kind of, to be honest, kind of an inherent laziness. Show me a technique. Show me what to do. I'll get my answer and I'll plug in the, plug in the answer. No, 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 no. That's the whole point is to understand things, to try to understand them. So uh, that's what we're doing here. So what's the next thing? Next thing is increasing or decreasing. And for this, we need the derivative. We can use either one of these forms. Um, I don't care. Let's, um, let's use this one. So, well, well, let's use this one. We'll just use a product rule. So the derivative is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of e to anything is e to that thing times the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top is just going to be a minus one. So this just becomes, um, oh, I'll write it as e to the negative x times one minus x. That wasn't bad. Make a number line. Um, it's going to be what? It's going to be change at 1. If you put in a number uh, larger than 1, this is always going to be positive. This will be negative. If you put in a number less than 1, such as 0, then 1 minus 0 is positive, And again, this will always be positive. So there's the only spot where it's changing. Here it increases, here it decreases, because this is the first derivative. Okay? I guess I forgot up here, and I squeeze it in here just to indicate that the function is going to, uh, it's going to what? If you ask where this thing is zero, it's, it intersects at zero. If you put in any number larger than zero, positive, positive, and you put in any number less than zero, it'll be negative, positive. So that's kind of nice to see. Okay. Finally, uh, concavity. Okay, so we take the second derivative. Here we go. What's the second derivative? The derivative of the first. You know what? Let's just, um, ah, we'll do this one. That's fine. Derivative of the first, which is e to the, it's negative e to the negative x times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Derivative of the second is right there. You multiply that out. And it's going to be, give myself a little more room here, it's going to be negative e to the negative x. Then negative times negative is going to be plus x e to the negative x. And here's another negative e to the negative x. So notice that we can factor a e to the negative x out, and we're left with an x. And we have a negative one here, a negative one there is negative two. So, very similar to this one. It's going to be zero when x is two. If you put in anything greater than zero, it's going to be positive. If you put in anything less than two, it's going to be negative. This is the second derivative we're talking about, so this is concave up and concave down. So now we can actually graph this thing. Let's see. Do we have room here? Let's see what, what we can do. Okay. So it only intercept is at 0, 0. It has 
up until you go to 1, it's increasing. What's the value at 1? At 1, it's going to be 1 over e to the 1. 1 over e to the x. Or, yeah, I'm sorry. 1 over e, rather. So let's just say it's that right there. At 2, what happens at 2? Right here, by the way, you're going to have a low relative minimum, a maximum rather, because it goes up and it comes down. At 2, it's concave down until you get there and it becomes concave up. So you have an inflection point there. And what's the value there? It's going to be 2 over e squared. I'm not sure what the exact value is. Let's just kind of put something there in. What, whatever I draw, we'll kind of use it and then go from there. If you want to put in the number, well, I guess I have it, right? It's 2 over e squared right there. Okay, so what does it look like? Starting right here, it's going up. Notice it's concave down all the way until you get to 2. It's, it's increasing until you get to 1. Once you pass 1, it starts decreasing like this. Concave down yet. Once you pass 2, it starts becoming concave up. So just to try to show that as well as I can. Ah, oh, that's pretty good. And then on this side of zero, what's happening? It's increasing and it's concave down. Remember, it's going to minus infinity very fast. So it looks something like that. There you go. So kind of a nice problem. Um, for whatever reason, I've seen functions like this quite a bit. They, I don't know, they seem to pop up in probability and various things. Um, nice curve. Just just look at it without without saying anything more than just, just th think of what kinds of things would maybe have a curve like this. I have a, or similar to this in shape. This is, I'm taping from my kitchen and I've got a popcorn popper right behind me. And when I put a lot of popcorn in this popcorn popper and ask, here's the time. And here is how fast the popcorn is popping. It kind of starts popping and then very quickly goes up. And then it starts going back down. And there's kind of a tail on this end. And, it, you know, you get a few pops at the very end. So there's some important mathematical um, graphs that have that kind of a general shape to it. Okay? Basically, it can't be any smaller than this, but they can get... The, the, the big side can really kind of go off to infinity. Although I seldom have a kernel that pops more than a minute after I turn off the popper. Every once in a while, though, it does. Okay, here's the last one, and I think you might be kind of surprised by the, by the graph. ln of x over x. Okay, let's go through the steps. This is the first one we've done with, with the ln. Um, so, domain, there you go. The ln only accepts things bigger than zero, and of course this can't be zero either. So there's your domain. Intercepts. There's no y-intercepts because it never hits the y-axis. x-intercepts, where is the ln of x equal to 0? That's when x is equal to 1. So you need to know your basic functions. There's what the ln looks like. Symmetries? None. Why do I say none? Well, we don't have anything over here. So you can't have Anything that's even, you can't have anything that's odd. And you might ask, hey, why not have something like, well, whatever that is. 
Uh, why can't it be symmetric with respect to the um, <laughs> uh, to the uh, x-axis? And of course the answer is because then it wouldn't be a function. So if you don't have both sides of the y-axis to work with, you, can, you don't have any symmetries. Uh, four, let's see, what's next? Uh, asymptotes. So let's first go vertical, and so I'll ask, what's the limit of the ln of x over x as x approaches 0 just from the right, right? Agreed? We can't even come in from the left because the domain is here. So what happens? As x approaches 0, again, you have to know what these functions look like. The ln of x is going down to minus infinity. And x is approaching 0. It's always going to be a positive number. Okay, so I'm giving you some good practice in this lesson. Can you tell me right away what's going on? Do we, do we use L'Hopital's rule? Nope, we can't. Bad news. The good news is we don't have to. This is getting big. This is pushing it on its way. They're working together. They're going off to minus infinity super, super fast. Okay, so let's just write... Um, limit as x approaches 0 from the right of our function is minus infinity. Okay, a big number divided by a small number is even a bigger number. Okay, how about as x goes to infinity? They're both going to infinity. Both getting big. Aha, we can use L'Hopital's rule here. Derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom. As x goes to infinity, 0 over 1 is 0. Okay, are we good? Okay, what about the derivative? Let's go ahead and use a quotient rule here. Derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So, if we were to simplify that, we're going to get 1 minus the ln of x over x squared. So where will that be 0? That'll be, well, or, or undefined. Well, I guess the end of it is, is at 0, so that's, that's, that's the end. But where will it be 0? That'll be when the ln of x is equal to 1. Take e to both sides. e to the ln of anything just gives you x is equal to e to the 1, which is e. So this thing is 0 when x is equal to e. If you throw in a huge number here, the ln will be big. 1 minus that will be negative. Negative over positive is negative. Put in a 1 right here. The ln of 1 is 0. 1 minus 0 is positive. Positive over positive is positive. So the function is increasing here, decreasing here. That's our first derivative. Okay. And again, shoot, I keep forgetting. Why, why do we forget it now? Once we did, um, once we, I tell you what, let's do it right here. Once we did uh, intercepts, let's find out where this function is positive or negative. Um, the ln of x is positive beyond greater than 1, and it's negative here. And x will always, always be positive. So this thing is 0 at 1, and, and uh, here you have 0, and beyond, on, on the, to the right of 1, they're both positive. If you're between 0 and 1, this is going to be negative over positive, so that's, that's kind of good. Okay, It's always good to have all that information so that if you do anything wrong, hopefully you'll, you'll have some contradictory information, and you'll catch yourself. So this is f right there. This is f prime. 
So now, so this is all increasing, decreasing. Okay. Now we'll do concavity. Okay. If you do concavity, what do we get? Uh, first of all, we need to uh, take the, the second derivative. The derivative of the top is going to be minus 1 over x times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Okay, we're filling up this board. Let's see once what happens. This over this is going to give us a negative x. This times this is going to be a negative 2x. And then finally, you're going to have a negative times negative is going to be a positive 2x ln of x. Everyone agreed? Okay, now I guess we have no choice but to go up to the top here. And we'll write this as 2x ln of x minus 3x all over x to the fourth. I'll factor an x out. All over x to the fourth. And finally, just to save time, or save space rather, I'll get rid of the x here and make that a x cubed. Okay, so this is the second derivative, and so now we want to know where will that be zero. So that will be zero. Well, first of all, here's your ending point, and the other place where it's zero is going to be when 2 ln of x minus 3 is equal to zero. So 2 ln of x would be 3, which means that ln of x is 3 halves which means that x is equal to, you take e to both sides, e to the 3 halves. Okay, so here's e to the 3 halves, right there. And unfortunately, for lack of, well, maybe we can fit everything in. Um, let's see. If you put in anything greater than, than this, like a billion, ln of that's going to be a big number. Positive on top, positive on the bottom. What's a nice number here again? Put in 1, that would be negative and positive. So it's concave down here and concave up here. And this is again the second derivative. There we go. So now we have all the information we need. Luckily, we don't need too much of a board because we don't have anything to the left of the, of the uh, y-axis. So what happens? Let's put it all together. Uh, at 1, there's an intercept. So I really should have this a little higher because I do have some negative stuff there. Do it like this. So there's 1. Um, e is an important point. It's increasing until you get to e and then decreasing. The ln of e is, is 1, so it's going to be 1 over e. So this is the value e, 1 over e. And you have a little relative maximum right there. And then, at, oops, I'm sorry, sorry. Right here. Right there and then finally running out of room so this is not probably quite the scale e to the three halves whatever that is the ln of e to the three halves is going to be just three halves three halves over e to the three halves which is three over two e times the square root of e I'll let you think about that and so it's increasing until it gets here and decreasing after one, and then it con and then it changes concavity right there, wherever this is. It must be down from there. 
So here's what it looks like. It comes through one, goes up, starts coming down, concave down yet. Once you pass this point, it becomes concave up. And it goes down there. And then here as you approach zero, it's heading off to minus infinity. So it looks something like that. So I kind of like it because, does that look familiar? It looks kind of similar to the last one we did. The last one had the entire domain as the whole x-axis as the domain. This has just the positive x-axis. But otherwise, it kind of has a similar shape. And if you remember, I think we did this one earlier in the course. And that one also had, uh, let's see, what did it look like again? It looked like this, kind of like that. So uh, it had kind of a similar shape too. I like all those shapes. It's, it's, it's not really a coincidence. I just pick, pick functions that have kind of a cool, cool shape to them. And nice looking function. So there you go. So uh, we go on to a new topic in the next lesson, but uh, now I think you are well introduced to graphing functions, which, which is really the, the core. If there's any core to Calc 1, this would be the core right here. Very good. Thank you.